You can't tell me a frog isn't one of the coolest ways to catch bass, even though they're the wrong bass. <laughs> she came right out of that tree and smashed a frog. Fishing homies, it's a good morning to be out here. We are out to the lake, it's absolutely gorgeous out. I'm gonna tell you about like a couple factors that's going on. It's like late spring, uh, it's finally starting to warm up. There should be a little shad spawn going on, but basically we had like a massive front go through a couple days ago. So now I'm back in like a sweatshirt, I got my like insulated pants on, cold front time, like we should be sweating, sweat, sweating balls right now, not, not wearing sweatshirts, but it is what it is. But the other thing that happened with that front is a bunch of rain came in. So here's what I'm really hoping for. So I always wanted to get on a punching and frogging bite out on these some of these clear lakes, but the best time to actually do it is when it rains a bunch and you get some of this flooding. Like I'm gonna show you like some of the, there's gonna be logs that you're gonna see that are gonna be floating out. It's kind of crazy, but you get like junk mats and stuff. So I'm hoping, but you know how it works with fishing. You can never plan ahead. There is no pattern until you find the pattern. But I think we should be able to catch some fish on top, doing some kind of like power fishing techniques on what's usually a fairly clear water lake and fishing some heavy cover on a lake where you're usually fishing like eight pound test and a, and a shaky head kind of thing. So I'm kind of excited. Come along with me, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. If you guys like grassroots videos, like real videos, you know, like all the pros are trying to do all these YouTube videos. We've been doing this since like 2008, buddy. Yeah, you guys didn't think we were cool. That No, no, you really didn't. So throw us a like and subscribe, dude. Hit that notification bell. If you don't do it for me, do it for this guy who's about to do his duty for man and country. Yeah, good job. Mark that pole, Bog. That's your pole. Let's get after it, boys. Yeah, so check this out. The water's all like gooey green. And you guys see all that like junk over there? Like that's all debris and stuff. There's another giant like tree log over there. But yeah, look at all that stuff. And I'm assuming it's gonna be kind of all over the lake. So we're gonna, basically what we're gonna look for is where that stuff all kind of like congregates together and like groups up and creates like a junk mat, almost like fishing in Florida. And we'll have to see if it works. I sure hope it does. So you can see we are literally in the woods, like like on my trail. We're going beyond where the sea map is. Like that's how kind of like flooded it is. We're going way up, up the creeks and just exploring. And there was a bunch of bait back there. But dude, I, I didn't see any bass and we threw a top water, we threw like a square bill. I pitched like, pitched all the trees like going down into there as well. And um, no dice, but I mean, that's the game you play. You gotta kinda, it takes a lot of time and, and that's what's annoying. But when you find the juice and when you find like a little section of, of the vermouge as J3 would say, like exactly what you're looking for, you know it and you know it pretty quick. A spot on a frog boys spot on a frog barely got it too <laughs> on a little frog look out look out the other one that's actually a better one i didn't think she was that big got him fired up now the funny part is guys like i really thought we'd be catching some large mouth but we're getting back in this thick stuff we're catching spotted bass on frogs. Unbelievable. What we're using, here's the funny part. I bought this frog, this floating frog, last year during um, during frog season on Gunnersville, and I don't even know what kind it is. The reason I bought it though, once I get this joker back together, I mean, this happens sometimes, dude, especially when they're, I mean, that joker crushed it. And all you do is you just slide it on through like that, and then you kind of work your way back on through with the, the middle part. But the trick with this is, is the water's a little bit tinged. Um, it's got like kind of a green or a brown tinge to it because we've had that rain and it's kind of swamped it out. So the color of like the year has been this red. 
So I had it from last year. It's a little smaller profile and you'll notice the hooks are bent up. I didn't actually do that. It's a trick I learned from Fletcher Shryock. Um, you bend up your hooks a little bit on that frog. So I do get hung if I throw it in like the thickest, craziest cover, but I don't miss fish. Like I think I've missed one fit. Actually, I missed one large mouth thus far today. I saw a turn on it, ironically, but you don't miss as many fish. And what I'm noticing is these fish are next to the cover they're not so much in the cover. Like they're in the shade next to the flooded tree. They're in stuff like that. They're not so much like deep in the stuff where you find a largemouth, but I'm gonna keep throwing there because I wanna find a largemouth. But just a micro frog, 40 pound braid. I got it on the SLX and then uh, a 7.2 kryptonite, medium heavy. Oh, that's a big spot, dude. That's a big old spot on a frog. <laughs> look at that thing. Dude, look how she ate that frog. Look at that thing. Look how she ate that frog. The golly. This is so cool. You know, we've been on these, these Magnum topwater bites and these awesome topwater bites. But golly, I have never, ever caught a spot on a frog. And that's what we just did. <laughs> <laughs> We've got quite a few of them, and this one's pretty, pretty darn big. Come here, girl. I'll let you. You got bug all excited. Look at that thing. Look at that. I mean, it's like a two and a half pound or two and three quarter, but, but dude, like, on a frog. Like seriously, spot on a frog. I'm trying to catch largemouth here. Like, what's going on? Get yourself back in there. Get yourself back. In there. I don't know how to explain it. We're in kind of like a flooding kind of situation. You can see all this flooded brush and that. I'm pitching it. I'm throwing a frog to it. Even these kind of mat things back here, I'm punching them. And you know, largemouth style tactics, yet I keep catching spots. Like at some point, hopefully we're gonna run into a largemouth, but but we'll keep this up while we're at it, huh? Guys, another one, but I missed, <laughs> I missed the bite because I'm an idiot. She came right out of that tree and smashed a frog. I've had to switch it up because I wrecked my frog and I went to a, a Coppers. You guys have seen this before in my videos. Uh, Coppers Live Target. Um, I thought it might be a little bit too big. It's a little bigger than the one I was using, but um, she, she annihilated it, dude. So I just got a pretty nice spot and I didn't get it on video because I'm an idiot and it was a perfect illustration of what I think are the two most important parts of frog fishing. You ready? You ready? They're really stupid too, dude. You're, you're gonna laugh. One, don't set the hook. Literally, don't set the hook. So here's the deal. With the frog fishing, a lot of times, and especially like, so we're fishing, we're catching spots. I wanna catch largemouth, but even largemouth, but spots, especially because their mouths are smaller, they'll thrash at the bait. They'll miss the bait. Well, dude, if you go and you set the hook and she's not on there, you're, you're gonna miss the fish. You're gonna pull the frog out of the area. A lot of times they'll, they'll knock it and try to kill it. I've seen largemouth do it in the pads a whole bunch. They'll like knock it to try to like knock it out and kill it. And then they'll come back and eat it. So don't set the hook until you feel weight. I mean, you're fishing this on braid. Like I don't see almost any exception. I fished a frog on mono in like 1996, I think, or something like that. But like when I was a kid, but dude, right now you should be fishing it on braid. So the moment you feel that rod load up, that's when you set the hook. Otherwise, don't set the hook. Seriously, if the frog's underwater, don't set the hook. Reel down, see if she's there, but don't set the hook. That's the, that's the one big thing. The other thing is, well, all right. So this is kind of a weird deal. Don't think about casting. Literally, dude, don't think about where you're throwing the bait. Because what we're doing is we're skipping it like into the shade, into like junk stuff that's back there, into these like little crevices and like little corners. And here's the deal, dude. You guys are good at fishing. Like, you know, if you watch these videos, you know how to fish, or at least you know how to fish decently. You know how to cast. And for me personally, when I start thinking about, man, I gotta get that frog like behind that tree, around the corner, and under that little mud overhang, I get a little intimidated, just a little bit. And then you start thinking about stuff, you start acting stupid, and then you do stupid stuff. Like you you miscast, or you, you hold on to the spool too long, or you, you do something dumb. Did you know what you're doing? 
I know what I'm doing, even though I don't believe that most of the time. Just trust your gut, dude. And when you're making those slangs, especially when you're skipping docks or you're skipping wood or you're trying to get way back in the cover in some little pocket, don't think about that cast. And I guarantee you, you do those two things, you're gonna catch more fish. Fish. So the best part about today, other than catching spots on a frog, Still searching for that large mouth. I found a ski. For those of you who don't know, I used to wakeboard and I can slalom ski. So I have a ski. If this is your ski, let me know and I'll get it back to you. But for now, it's my ski. <laughs> it's a large mouth finally? No, it's a spot. God bless. <laughs> We're still trying to catch a largemouth, and we can only catch spots on a frog. Something wrong with that, boys. Something wrong with that. Oh, yeah. Please be a largemouth. Please be a largemouth. I think it's a largemouth. Oh, no, it's a giant spot. Come here. Look up, Buck. Look up. That is a giant, a giant spot. Why are you not a largemouth? Why are you not a largemouth? Look at how she ate that thing, dude. You can't tell me a frog isn't one of the coolest ways to catch bass, even though they're the wrong bass. <laughs> Just an absolute, like, a toad spot, but totally the wrong kind. Let's get her released and put her back in her home real quick. What a beautiful fish. not having it you know it's the same kind of pattern i just think we should be catching largemouth i'm not going to complain but you know way back looking for kind of flooded cover you can see around me there's a bunch of trees there's a bunch of bushes there's a bunch of like scum there's there's bog licking up the fish scum. oh come on now, dude don't do that but it's it's so largey cover but we're catching spots but really with this frog pattern you can catch largemouth spots even smallies at some point. You just have to downsize your frog and kind of play into the, the species that are around, really. Hey, Bog, what do you say we wrap this thing up? Are you, oh, you just want to lick more fish. Oh, lick more fish. So give this video a like for Bog if, if you like him more than me, which is probably the case. But let's talk about the two different baits we used. I don't know what this is. I'm gonna figure it out. But it, dude, this has been the hottest color in fishing this year. It's this Texas kind of style red, a little bit of orange. This is a little smaller frog. And as we talked about, those hooks are bent up a little bit. They come like that. Not great for super heavy cover, but for semi sparse stuff like this, gives you so much better of a hookup, dude. And it's, and it's just like, you know, all you're doing is walking it. You're throwing it out like in these little holes next to the wood, in little like ditches, in little flood ends where the pollen comes and and you're just twitch 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 pause twitch 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 pause the other one and this is actually my favorite frog this is a copper's live target this is the smaller one it's just it's a little compact floating frog I love this thing. They tear up super easy, uh, but they walk amazingly. And when the fish like chomps down on them, they really just hold on to them. And you know, simple colors, like I was running that red, run like brown top, but really it's a white belly. Looks just like shad. The water that we got into a little later today kind of got a little bit clearer so that that red color like that wasn't nearly as essential to kind of like show them where the frog was and, and what was going on. But it's interesting though too, because we had a lot of wind and you know, still walking that frog being super subtle, it doesn't have any kind of rattle or anything like that, they'd still come up and crush it. It was a little harder to fish because you get bows in your line, but dude, if you wanna have some fun, I don't care where you live, I don't care what kind of fish you're on, smallmouth, largemouth, spots, as long as it's spring and later, you can catch them on a frog like and it is a blast dude just grab some braid establish what kind of rod you need do you need something for super heavy cover do you need something where you're walking it more in the sparse stuff kind of like my my kryptonite like a medium heavy you know like something a little bit softer because you're just you're focusing on walking in the action you don't have to worry so much about getting the fish out dude grab one and get out after it it is so much fun Dude, when they blow up on it, you lose it. 
but I appreciate you guys watching this video and your support for the channel. It's not a big channel, but it's a grassroots channel and it's all about me sharing my experience and you guys have helped me so much with dropping comments down in the comments box, giving me insights on baits, on techniques, correcting me when I screw up because like, dude, I'm wrong a lot. Like I, I make a lot of mistakes. It's just the way it is. I, I'm real, real hashtag real fish. Well, I don't know if I'm real, but you, you know what I mean, dude. Like we all make mistakes. I just try to throw it out there, give something and try to get something back. And that's the way it kind of, I think life should work. So thank you guys for watching. Say goodbye to Bog Bog. You ready to go eat some dinner? Yes, good Bog. Oh, so much licking. And don't forget, when you find a water ski, take it home. <laughs> Tight lines, guys.